Hey, Mr. P here. In this video, we're going to talk about light microscopy. So uh, we're not going to focus on a whole bunch of other types of microscopy. We're going to focus on what it means to be a light microscope. We're going to talk about the anatomy, um, both external and internal of a light microscope. We're going to talk about how the light has to travel through and what it has to travel through in order for you to resolve images uh, in a light microscope. And so this video is all about light microscopy. Let's get started. So. A light microscope, like the microscopes you use in class or will use in class, is a compound light microscope. There are a series of external features that you have to understand. Um, you have to be able to um, use adjustment knobs and diaphragms and condensers in order to fully um, clarify the image or, or um, in order to make the image clear and see the image at the, uh, the right magnification. And so we need to understand what the pieces of the microscope are. And so starting from the top, we have the ocular lens or ocular lenses. Um, some of the microscopes we have in class are a single eyepiece microscope. Some of them are the binocular, meaning they have two eyepieces. We will use both. You need to be comfortable with both. And so those are the ocular lenses. They typically have a magnification on their own of 10 times. At least all of the in-class microscopes will have a 10 times ocular lens. Then you have the body tube, which is where the light will travel through. It also houses the prism, which we'll get to when I kind of dive into the internal structures. Then you have the arm. That's just a support mechanism. That is the uh, piece of, of the microscope that you will hold when you carry it. You have the objective lenses, which range in magnification from about four times to 100 times. The, the biggest objective, which is an oil immersion lens, we're going to talk about that in a minute is a 100 times objective. The only time you need or should use the 100 times is if you have to uh, uh, distinguish between very small images, looking at prokaryotes, stuff like that. But you have to uh, ensure that you're using immersion oil in order to uh, effectively use that lens. That has a 100 times. Then you have a, uh, an objective lens that has a 4, 10, and 40 times objective. The way that microscopes work, and we'll get to it in a minute about calculation of magnification, is that um, you will take the objective or the ocular lens magnification and you will multiply it times the objective lens magnification to get total magnification. Again, we'll, we'll kind of expand on that in a minute. You have the stage, which is where the sample or the cover, the slide and cover slide will sit. You also have the condenser. The condenser is the piece of equipment that is going to condense the light and focus the light on your image. You have the diaphragm, which can control how much light goes through the condenser. You um, obviously have the illuminator, which is the light source. All of the illuminators in our uh, laboratory uh, microscopes are going to be LED. You have coarse adjustment knob or coarse focusing knob. You also have a fine focusing knob. And then, of course, you have the base. Okay, All of these things are really intuitive, easy to use. You need to get familiar with them and make sure you know how to use them correctly. Okay, If we dive into the internal structures or kind of look at kind of an x-ray image of a microscope, you will see that you have a line of vision. Obviously, you're going to look through either the single eyepiece or the two or the double eyepiece. That obviously gives you your line of vision. The nice thing about the double eyepiece is that you don't have to squint or shut one eye. Um, you get a better field of view. You also can adjust these eyepieces to go out or in depending on how wide your eyes are. And so make sure you are using the microscope appropriately. Make sure you're adjusting all of the things that you need to adjust. Uh, the eyepiece um, obviously is where you look. You will follow the blue lines through this microscope. That is obviously the path of light. This is actually the path that the light from the illuminator will take. Okay. The light source will uh, travel from the illuminator through the condenser and diaphragm through the specimen. Notice that that is where it is focused. It actually kind of crosses over each other. It goes through a series of objective lenses up through a prism, which is going to bounce around in that for a while before it is traveling through the ocular lens and out through uh, your eyeballs. Obviously, I said that is your objective lens. You have the specimen, which is sitting on the stage. You have your condenser lenses, which are going to condense and focus the light source on the specimen, and then uh, obviously your illuminator. Okay, 
make sure you understand the path that the light takes and what it has to travel through in order for you to be able to successfully see an image at magnification. Okay. So some microscope terminology that is important that you understand is total magnification, resolution, and reflect, refractive index. So I have used already in the five minutes of this lecture total magnification. Total magnification is the objective lens times the ocular lens. Okay. If we are using the 100 times objective lens, which is the oil immersion lens, and we're using uh, immersion oil effectively, and we are obviously putting that um, also, through an ocular lens, we're going to magnify or multiply the 100 times times the 10 times, and you will see that we will successfully totally magnify that image 1,000 times. Um, that is the limitation of the microscopes in our room, okay? 1,000 times is the biggest magnification or the largest magnification we are successfully able to achieve in my classroom. Um, obviously, we have other microscopes in other labs or biotech labs or um, you know, post-secondary education labs uh, that will go much higher than that, but um, that is a limitation that we have to kind of work with within our high school and our, our lab. So, objective lens times ocular lens gives you total magnification. I'll just use TM, total magnification. Now, our microscopes are not always going to be 1,000 times total magnification. Okay, If you take, for instance, the four times objective lens, again run it through the 10 times ocular lens, the ocular lens doesn't change. The only change you can make between magnifications when you're looking at or through the microscope is you can change the ocular uh, or the objective lens, okay? So let's assume we're starting with the smallest objective lens at four times. We're going to take four times times our 10 times ocular lens and you will see that that is only a four times total magnification. Okay, 40 times total magnification. So our microscopes will, um, will range when you're using the different objectives from the lowest magnification of 40 times all the way up to the highest magnification of 1,000 times. Resolution is the microscope's ability to distinguish two points. So if you are successfully able to tell that those two dots are distinguished points okay, that are completely separate, you have effectively resolving power and microscopes have that ability. If, however, the dots are too close together that it appears as one, you physically can't see the separation between the dots, um, you lack the true resolving power to be able to distinguish those two points. So as microscopes go up and as the quality of the microscope up uh, goes up then obviously you can see that the quality of the resolving power will also go up microscopes are really only as good as the resolving power okay you have to be able to distinguish very small parts from each other in order for you to make the image clear so resolution um, kind of goes along with the clarity of the microscope okay if you're looking at an image and it looks like it's all jumbled and muddy and you can't distinguish anything from each other then obviously the resolution power or the resolution isn't very good and the clarity is not very good refractive index is the measure of the light bending ability of a medium so you can see that in this image this is demonstrating the refractive index and um, when you send light which is obviously coming from the illuminator the light source down here and it's coming up through the condenser lenses, because these lenses are not flat, it's going to cause the light to bend when light goes through medium. So light's going to bend when it goes through water. Light's going to bend when it goes through glass. It's going to bend when it goes through uh, lenses. It's going to also bend when it goes through the slide. It's also going to bend when it goes through the specimen or the medium that you're looking at. Okay. Light bends when it travels through a uh, medium. So in order to minimize the amount of light that is being lost, because as you can see that if this is our objective lens and it is not successful in collecting the light, the light is not going to be seen, okay? Or the image isn't going to be seen. The only thing that we're going to see is what actually effectively gets moved up the microscope through the prism and through the ocular lens into your eyeball, right? 
if the light coming from the illuminator bends and refracts out and is completely lost, it's not going to be picked up by the objective and therefore not going to be seen. Okay. Um, again, we're going to talk about this more when we get into you know further microscopy techniques, but that is the, the biggest reason we use oil immersion. Notice that there is on this left side of the diagram this kind of tube of oil. This is actually immersion oil and it is used to kind of create a, uh, a, a wall so that the light can't physically leave. Um, it actually kind of um, acutes, if you will, the, the angle of the light bending, and so the light effectively stays in that tube or in that column and can be picked up and can be seen. So when you're using your bigger objective lenses like the 100 times that's why I said it is an oil immersion lens it is required to use oil otherwise you will lose all of the light and won't be able to pick up any image again we'll practice that in the lab um, you know this isn't the last time you will see that okay now three different light microscopy techniques that I'm going to kind of focus on right now and then that will uh, be the end of the video. Um, all of these are light microscopy techniques. You will see that all of these images are different. However, the sample in the image is the same. So this is a paramecium. It's a single-celled eukaryote. And A is our normal bright field light microscopy. Okay, this is the normal compound light microscope. This is the type of microscope and the type of microscopy we'll be using in lab. This is the most familiar or probably the most familiar to you. The light comes from the illuminator. It goes through a condenser lens. It goes through your medium, specifically the specimen that is on your slide. It's picked up by an objective lens, goes through a prism, and goes through the ocular lens before it is picked up and seen by your eyes. Okay. Bright field illumination shows all of the internal structures and the outline of the transparent pellicle, which you can see here. Okay, you can kind of see the outline of it. You can see that this paramecium is full of uh, cilia, and that helps it to move. Uh, but the pellicle refers to the external covering. So you can see that really in this image and this image alone, in comparison to these other two images, this is the best bet in seeing external features of the cell. Um, it lacks maybe on the internal structures, but it definitely excels in the external structures. If we go to the next one, this is dark field light microscopy. You will hopefully see that there's a big difference between the field of view, meaning in bright field light microscopy, the background is light. In dark field light microscopy, the background is dark. We can't see the external pellicle. In fact, we cannot tell that this cell has any cilia at all. But um, the nice thing about dark field light microscopy is that it uses a special condenser with an opaque disc, which is going to eliminate all of the light in the middle. And so only light that is kind of reaching the specimen here is light that is coming in at a very sharp angle, meaning it's going to kind of give the image more contrast between the background and the image okay um, it just gives you a different view you can kind of see that this one is kind of grainy but you can see the outside very well this one is kind of more clear and more three-dimensional more contrast more colorful but you can't see the external pellicle at all so there is a trade-off okay it depends on what kind of features you want to look at uh, in order for you to determine which type of microscopy is the best then you have phase contrast light microscopy, which as you can see is kind of um, the best of both worlds. You can see that you can see a little bit of the external pellicle, but the internal structures are very contrasted. In fact, you have a lot of color. And the nice thing about phase contrast light microscopy is that the specimen is illuminated by light passing through an annular, which is a ring-shaped diaphragm. Direct light, ra light rays are unaltered by the specimen. They travel a different path than the light rays that are reflect, uh, reflected. And so when you have the two sets of rays that are combined, it provides a greater differentiation of the internal structures and clearly shows the pellicle. You can basically see that you have light coming in at an angle. You also have light that is coming in more direct. Because of the way that the light is being kind of diffused through the specimen and then picked up, 
um, you get a more contrasted uh, picture. And so you get kind of this dark field view, but you also get the external pellicle and you get really contrasted internal structures. Um, all three of these images are exactly the same in terms of the, the object being studied. It's a paramecium, but you can see that using different light microscopy techniques gives you a very different image depending on what structures you want to look at and what you want to study dictates uh, which light microscopy technique you should use. But all light microscopy uses light, visible light, as the energy source and as the, the medium by which the image will be shown. So if you have any questions, let me know. Bring them to class. See ya.